welcome to the very first lesson of the Cambridge IGCSE Physical Education course. We'll begin today with Anatomy and Physiology and the first chapter, the Skeletal and Muscular System. Today's topic is the skeleton and its functions, which you can find at the very start of the contents page in your official Cambridge textbook. As always, we'll be focusing on the learning objectives from the official Cambridge syllabus so that you learn absolutely everything that you need to know for your exam. The first objective today is to outline the four main functions of the skeleton, to name and locate the main bones and classify them according to type, and to describe the functions of the different bones. So let's begin with the first objective. Now the skeleton has four main functions, the first being shape and support. The skeleton forms the frame which our muscles can attach to and our organs can sit. Bones also support the weight of the body above them, such as the spine, which enables us to stand upright. The skeleton also enables us to move. Muscles are attached to the skeleton by tendons and when they contract, they actually pull on the bones creating movement at the joints. So they essentially use the bones and the joints as levers. An example of this is where the bicep muscle contracts, pulling on the forearm and creating movement at the elbow when performing something such as a bicep curl. Our third function is protection. Our body obviously contains many vital organs which need to be protected by something. And a couple of examples are the brain which is protected by the cranium and the heart and lungs which are protected by the ribs and the sternum. Our final function is blood production. Now the centre of some large bones contain bone marrow, specifically red bone marrow, which produces red blood cells. The pelvis and femur are large bones which contain lots of bone marrow and are therefore really important for red blood cell production. We're now going to take a look at our second learning objective, which is to name and locate the bones and classify them according to type. The first is the cranium, otherwise known as the skull. It's a flat bone and its main role is protecting the brain. The clavicle, otherwise known as the collarbone, is a long bone and helps to create movement at the shoulder joint. The scapula is the shoulder blade, which is a large flat bone which provides a big surface area for muscles to attach to. The humerus is a long bone which sits in the upper portion of the arm. Its main role is to provide movement. The ribs are flat bones which help to protect the vital organs inside the chest cavity. The vertebrae are irregular bones. They stack on top of one another to form the spine. There are two bones in the forearm and the radius is the one that sits in line with the thumb. The other one is the ulna, which is also a long bone and sits alongside and works with the radius. The pelvis is a large flat bone, which again provides the surface area needed for muscle attachments. The femur is the biggest bone in the human body and is also a long bone. It has a role in producing red blood cells, but primarily it's there for movement. The patella is the kneecap, which is both there to protect the knee joint but also to provide some stability when moving. The two long bones in the lower body are the tibia which is the stronger larger of the two bones which sits at the front and is otherwise known as the shin bone. The fibula is slightly smaller and sits just alongside and behind the tibia. There are many bones within the foot and the first one we're going to look at is the talus. It sits at the top of the foot, it's a short bone and its main functions are to provide support and movement. The tarsals sit just below the talus and are also short bones. They connect to the metatarsals below, which are long bones, not because of their absolute length, but because they're much longer than they are wide. The phalanges are also long bones. They're the really small ones that we know as the toes. Moving into the hand now, we have the carpals. Just like the tarsals, these are short bones which sit at the top portion of the hand. Moving down, we have the metacarpals and then finally the phalanges again. Now we're already on our final learning objective, which is to describe the functions of different bones. The first type of bones, which I've already referred to, are long bones. Now these act as levers to produce large range of movement within the human body and are usually found in the limbs. Examples include the femur, the tibia and the humerus bones. Short bones are small bones that enable movement and provide support. They can't produce a big range of movement like long bones, however, and examples include the carpals and the tarsals in the hands and feet. Flat bones, such as the cranium and ribs, provide protection for vital organs, while others, such as the scapula, provide a large surface area for muscle attachments. Finally, we have irregular bones, and these aren't very common within the human body. They provide protection and support, and their shape suits their specific function. Vertebrae are a great example. They're shaped so that they can protect the spinal cord which runs within the spine, and they also allow a small range of movement in many directions, 
So believe it or not, we've just covered absolutely everything for the first lesson on the skeleton and its functions. Feel free to come back and watch this video as many times as you need to, and I'll see you in the next one.